Welcome to the topic assigning oxidation number. The oxidation number of an element in a given compound depends on the composition of the compound. The oxidation number or valence number are arbitrary numbers. They are based upon the rules such as the following. The oxidation number of a combined element is zero. The common oxidation number for hydrogen in compounds is positive one. Negative 1 for hydrides, for oxygen it is negative 2, but negative 1 for peroxide. The common oxidation number for group 7A elements in a binary compounds is negative 1. It varies in tertiary, tertiary compounds. The common oxidation number of group 1A ions is positive 1. For group 2A it is positive 2. And for group 3A, it is positive 3. The oxidation number of an ion is computed, calculated rather, if the oxidation number of all the other ions in the compound are known, since the sum of all oxidation numbers in a compound is zero. You have to bear in mind all this rule when you are asked to balance a redox equation. So to summarize that rule, we can have it similar to the position of the element in the periodic table. Okay, here the elements with ions of only one charge, we have the group 1A, hydrogen as hydride is negative 1, but in some compound it is positive 1. Okay, if it's up as the metal, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium have all positive 1 oxidation number. For family 2A, you have the beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Among the group 3A, aluminum will have positive 3. Because boron could have positive 3 or negative 5 depending on the composition, the compound, it, composition of the compound where boron is present. Carbon as carbide is negative 4. But later, we'll show you that it has deep other oxidation number. Okay, nitride. We have negative 3, phosphide negative 3, and for group 6A, following the octet rule, okay, which says that an atom becomes stable if and only if it has eight balance electron. So the group 8A have six balance electron. It needs two more. That's why the oxidation state is negative two for most element under this group 6A. So ox oxygen as an oxide is always negative 2 except in peroxide being negative 1. Sulfide, selenide, telluride are negative 2 as well. For the group 7A, the halides have negative 1 oxidation number. By having 7 valence electron, it needs only one more electron to follow the octet rule. Okay. To illustrate how these rules are applied in assigning oxidation number of an element, we have the following example. Okay, here we have your sodium chloride. Since the oxidase, the sum, it states there the sum of all oxidation number in a compound is zero, so we apply the crisscross method that you have learned in your previous topic, okay? So, by the crisscross method, writing formula, sodium being on family 1A is positive 1, chlorine on 7A is negative 1. So, the 1, 1, the subscript, which is not written, it's understood to be with 1 subscript by the crisscross method. Chlorine, chlorine being chloride under 7A is negative 1, sodium being on family 1A is positive 1. So the sum of the oxidation number is 0 in the compound. In the second example, we have dichlorine heptoxide. Okay, again, by the crisscross method, oxygen, the subscript of chlorine there, corresponds to the oxidation state of oxygen. And 7 is the oxidation state of chlorine. Again, applying the rule, that the sum of all oxidation number in a compound is zero, we have two times positive seven is positive 14, plus two, negative two times seven is negative 14, that would give you 
positive 14 plus negative 14 equal to 0. Okay, moving on, we have next, we have ferric chloride. The subscript of chloride here corresponds to the oxidation state of iron, positive 3. And you have negative 1 for chloride being on family 7A. However, in the last example, we have positive 7 because it is joined with a more, more electronegative element, which is oxygen. Okay, here, by the crisscross method, we obtain the oxidation state. Again, applying the rule that the sum of the oxidation number in a compound is 0. We have positive 3 plus times 1 is positive 3 plus plus 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, then the sum is equal to 0. Okay, next we have ferrous chloride. Again, the, by the crisscross method, you have positive 2 and negative 1. Again, the sum must be equal, is equal to 0. Okay, next example, we have carbon dioxide. Okay, between carbon and oxygen, oxygen is more neg electronegative, so it will have negative 2 here on 7A. Again, since the sum of all the oxidation number in a compound is equal to 0, carbon here must be positive 4. Okay, in the next example, we have carbon monoxide. Again, oxygen is always negative 2 except in peroxide. So carbon here must be positive 2 to follow the rule number 5 in assigning oxidation number that the sum of all oxidation number in a compound is equal to 0. Okay, moving on, we have next, we have methane. We have carbon and hydrogen. Between the two, carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen, so carbon will carry a negative sign, and hydrogen being positive is under family 1A. It has only one valence electron to share with carbon. Okay, to, again, to, to sum up that all the na oxidation number in the compound is zero, this must be negative four. Take note here, we have in number five, we have carbon positive four, carbon positive 2, and in methane, it is negative 4. Okay, so the assigning of, of oxidation number of an element in a compound is arbitrary depending on the composition of the compound or meaning what element it is combining with to form that compound. Okay, the next number, we have ammonia. Okay, between nitrogen and hydrogen, nitrogen is more electronegative, so we assign negative sign. And less electronegative, positive, and being of family 1A, we have positive 1. So this your nitrogen here is negative 3. Okay, again, negative 3 plus positive 3 is equal to 0. It's easy if you have binary compound. You just apply your the technique, the reverse of the technique of crisscross method. How about if we have tertiary compound? So we apply your simple algebra. In, the, in this example, wherein we have carbonic acid, we have three elements here. We have hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So oxygen is always negative 2, and hydrogen is positive 1. Okay, so we assign x for the third to and sum them up to be equal to 0, the sum of, of all of all the oxidation number in that compound. So we have 2 times positive 1, the subscript of hydrogen times its oxidation number, plus 1, the subscript of carbon times X, which is we let it to be unknown, plus 3, the subscript of oxygen times negative 2 is equal to 0. So we have positive 2 plus X minus 6 is equal to 0. So x minus 4 is equal to 0, so x there is positive 4. So carbon in carbonic acid is positive 4. Okay? Now next we have nitric acid. Okay, we have hydrogen positive 1, oxygen negative 2. Again, we let that to be x. Again, we sum that up. up. We sum, take the sum of all the oxidation number in the compound equal to 0. We have 1 times positive 1 plus 1 times x plus 3 times negative 2 is equal to 0. Okay, we have positive 1 plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. 
So we have x minus 5 equal to 0. Therefore, x is positive 5. So nitrogen here is positive 5. In the previous example, nitrogen is negative 3. Okay? Next, we have nitrous acid. Again, hydrogen is positive 1. Oxygen is negative 2. Again, we let that to be x. We have 1 times positive 1 plus 1 times x plus 2 times negative 2 is equal to 0. We have positive 1 plus x minus 4 is equal to 0. So x minus 3 is equal to 0. x is therefore equal to positive 3. So nitrogen here is positive 3. Again, nitrogen in the last example, we have negative 3 in ammonia. Nitrogen in nitric acid is positive 5. In nitrous acid, it is positive 3. Okay. Again, as I've said a while ago, the oxidation number or the valence number of the element in the compound is arbitrary. It will depend on the composition of the compound where the element belongs. Okay. Now, moving on. Again, we assign positive 1 for hydrogen being on family 1A. Oxygen on, seven, on 6A, negative 2, meaning 2 more electrons to follow the octet rule. Whereas the passive meaning it is giving off that electron, so, but in this case it will be shared. For the metal, they are giving off their valence electron so that they will have an outer energy level composing of 8 valence electrons. So if we let your sulfur here to be X, then we solve for that. We have 2 times positive 1 plus 1, which is the subscript of sulfur, times x, plus 4 times negative 2 is equal to 0. So we have positive 2 plus x minus 8 is equal to 0. Therefore, we have x minus 6 is equal to 0. Therefore, x would be positive 6. So sulfur in the sulfuric acid is positive 6. Now, in the next example, we have sulfurous acid. Again, we have hydrogen positive 1, oxygen negative 2. Okay, solving for that to be x or an unknown, we have 2 times positive 1 plus 1 times x plus 3 times negative 2 is equal to 0. We have positive 2 plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Then we have x minus 4 is equal to 0, therefore x is positive 4. So sulfur here is positive 4 in dihydrogen sulfide. In dihydrogen sulfate, it is positive 6. Or sulfur as sulfate is positive 6. Sulfur in sulfide is positive 4. Next, moving on, we have potassium permanganate. Potassium being on family 1A, as I've shown you before, it, it is among the family 1A, so it is positive 1, so you have positive 1 for potassium. Oxygen is always negative 2, except in peroxide being negative 1. Okay, so if we let that, how about we use Y here as an unknown? Okay, we have 1 times positive 1 plus 1 times y as the unknown plus 4 times negative 2 is equal to 0. Any letter will suffice that. It just said that will represent our unknown. Okay, positive 1 plus y minus 8 is equal to 0. So y minus 7 is equal to 0. So your y is positive 7. So the state of manganese here is positive 7 in potassium permanganate. In the next example, we have binary compound manganese oxide. Okay, the oxygen is negative 2. Again, to balance, that the, to make it equal to 0, that is positive 4. In the previous example, in the third area compound, potassium permanganate, we have it positive 7. In the binary compound here, we have positive 4 for manganese. Okay, next we have manganese chloride. Chlorine is 7A, halogen. Okay, or halide, we have negative 1. Again, by the crisscross method, by manganese is positive 2. Okay, so that is how we assign oxidation number 
in an element in a given compound. Okay. That's all for this topic.